Hi friends. Uh, so today, the Python for machine learning uh, will be moving to the topics, functions, string, and numbers. Okay, here numbers will be dealing with number system. Okay. Uh, so these are the contents: function, string, and numbers. Okay. okay. So first, we'll move the functions. So you know in C program, in C program what you do is to give a function, okay, to write a function for example to check whether a given number is prime, uh, even or not. Okay. So first what you will do is you will write the return type. Then you will write a function name in bracket. You will first write the parameter type, then you will write the parameter name. Okay, so if I'm calling it as x, I will write x. Okay, and uh, after that, I will be writing starting with brackets, starting with brackets, and then I will be writing if a one, two, equal to, equal to, so if x one, two, equal to, equal to zero then I know that it is an even number so I will be writing uh, print that even okay else I will be writing that print that okay. so this is how you will be writing a function in the program Okay, so first you will be defining the return type, and you will be giving the function name. Then you will be giving of what are the integer type of the integer and the, the integer. Okay, then you will write the function body. That's all. Okay, so that's how you will be writing it in the C program in functions in C program. But uh, when you deal with the function in Python, there is a big difference. Okay, for function in Python, you will be starting with a keyword. That is def. Okay, def is a keyword that is used to define a function. Okay, so def is a keyword that is used to define a function. Okay, and likewise after that you will be writing function name. After that you will be writing the function name. Okay, you can see that there is no return type. No return type is specified. Okay, here no return type is specified. Okay, after that, you will be writing the function name. Clear. Then you will be writing the parameters. Here also you can see that type of parameter, type of parameter, type of parameter is also not defined. Okay. In this program, you can see that type is int, int s. So the uh, type of the parameter is integer. Okay. But here, we are not defining the type of the parameter. We will be using just the parameter. After that, you will be writing that function body. Clear. So uh, we'll just uh, write one program. Okay, one program for using function. Okay. So uh, we'll be writing the EF define. I'm writing a function. I'm writing whether is even. Okay, is even number. The function name okay in bracket i am writing x so x is the what do you say uh, x is r okay inside that i am uh, writing okay inside that i am writing uh, if okay x mod 2 equal to equal to 0 x mod 2 equal to equal to 0 then I'll be writing print even. And I'll be writing print okay, so this is my definition, function definition. Okay, so in this definition I have written uh, I have defined the function 
okay and uh, the function name is ec1 number the function name is ec1 number it is taking in and input x okay so x is the uh, argument value then if x mod 2 equal to equal to 0 that uh, we will be checking whether it's even or not so we will be displaying even else you will be displaying the support okay so i'll just uh, check whether the function is correct or not so if i'm writing is even number of 25 is even number of 25 if i'm writing like this you can get out is that it is out okay so i'm just uh, uh, <coughs> giving an output. Okay, else I can just give as output as two. Okay, or I can uh, simply change the input like uh, definition like I'll be writing return. Okay, so this is a function. I have changed the function so that uh, there is a return statement in this. Okay, so if I'm writing return. Okay, and I am writing x mode 2 equal to equal to 0. I am writing like this. Okay, if I am writing, define this even number x. Okay, so this is a function I have written so that it do have a return statement. So I have type type like return x mode 2 equal to equal to 0. And if I'm writing like this, is even number will get a output as false. Okay. And uh, if I am giving whether uh, if uh, 28 is an even number, is even number of 28 will get a value. Okay, so this is how we will define a function. So you will be having definition, define is a keyword that is used, and you will write the function name. Then uh, in bracket you will be writing the argument name okay you won't be de defining the type of the argument you won't be defining the type of the argument you'll be defining the argument name then inside that you will be writing uh, what are the in the function for it okay and uh, <clears throat> another thing that uh, you have to understand is in python it is possible okay in python it is possible to uh, return more than one value in zero mm -hmm. down only one value can be returned. Okay. In C program, only one value could be returned. Okay. In C program, only one value can be returned. But in Python, the specialty of Python is that it can return more than one value. Okay. It can return more than one value. Okay. So, for example, I am right, uh, I'm defining a function. Okay. And uh, I am naming it as swap. Okay, uh, okay, I'm naming uh, it as, so I'll, uh, I'll do one thing, uh, I will uh, modulus of v2, this is a function, okay, so uh, I have a function, the function name is modulus of 3,2, 3, 2, this is a function name, and then in this function what I'm doing is I'm accepting an integer let it be x okay so here i'm uh, accepting an integer and uh, it's x okay so i have uh, defined an argument as x okay now i can uh, i said i can return two or more values right more than one value i can return okay so if i'm writing uh, return x mode comma x mode okay, so this is the return statement okay, so actually modulus uh, for 3 2 okay so here what happens is uh, this function returns two values x mode 3 and x mode 2 okay modulus means uh, the remainder after dividing it with the uh, uh, divisor okay uh, here divisor is 3 so whatever the remainder will get when you divide x by 3 will be returned also the remainder when you uh, divide 2 sorry uh, x with the 2 
it's also written so two values are written here okay two values are written here so the uh, if i am writing uh, i am calling this function so i am calling modulus modulus of 3 comma 2 of uh, let me say let it be 25 okay and so i'll say 50 okay so it is divisible by 3 right so it will be you see the following condition okay so here is something so it gives out two values, 0, 1. So it can uh, use two values. What I can do is I can either uh, store it in two variables. It is possible for you to store the return values in variables. Okay, so if I need to store these values, so I'll be writing a comma b equal to a comma b equal to uh, modulus of 3 comma 2. And if I'm writing to p, if I write like this, I write like this, and uh, if I'm writing in the next step, if I'm writing print a, if I'm writing print a, if I'm writing print a, zero is written. What is zero? Zero is the first value. Okay, so what happens is first value is stored in a, first return value is stored in a, and the second return value is stored in b. Clear. So if I'm writing print B, if I display it, I will get the value 1. Because the first value is stored in A and the second value is stored in B. Okay. So the peculiarity of the Python function is that it can return more than one value. In C program, C language, the peculiarity was that only one value could be returned. But here, we can return more than one value. Either it can be stored or it can be displayed directly. Clear. Hope you uh, hope it is clear for you. Okay, so that's all about functions. That's all about functions. Okay, and uh, if I say that uh, <clears throat> in functions, there are some functions called the recursive functions. So uh, next topic. Uh, so this is a definition. Okay, so which one is the recursive function? Recursive function. What do you mean by a recursive function? A function calling itself is called a uh, recursive function. A function calling itself is called a recursive function. Okay, so here is a definition of factorial. You have already learned about factorial in C program. So this is a simple example that you need to know when you uh, deal with the recursive function. Definition of the factorial. Okay, here also I am writing that is the keyword that is used to define a function. Factorial is the name of the function and in bracket I am using a variable. Okay, and in condition I am writing if n equal to equal to 0, return 1. Else, return n into factorial of n minus 1. n into factorial of n minus 1. Clear. So, uh, this is how the definition of the function is. Here we can see that inside the function itself, the function is called again. Inside the function itself, it is called again. So, it is called the recursive function, a function calling itself. It's called a recursive function that you already know. Okay. Hope it is clear. Okay. If you have any doubts, you can just ping me. Okay. Now, we'll move to the next topic that is strings. What do you mean by strings? Okay. Strings are actually uh, character arrays. Okay. Character arrays or set of characters that are stored. Okay. Set of characters that are stored is called strings. Okay, so I will be taking a new notebook so that uh, everything will not get mixed up. Okay, so, okay, so, name Okay, strings. Okay, so to assign a value string, I, I can give, give it as a name is a string and the name will have a value and name. Okay, so what happens? Name will be used as a string. And the name will be having the value antony. Besides from uh, uh, C program, in Python we have a lot of functions, a lot and lot of functions for string, so that we can just directly use it. Okay, there will be a lot of function in uh, string. Okay, for example, uh, some of the functions that we use in strings, some of the functions that we use in strings are this. These are some of the functions that we use in string. Okay, so we'll find out the, uh, we'll move to this function uh, one by one. 
first one is plus okay plus means it is used for concatenation adding two strings okay so if i am writing name equal to anthony uh, okay, name equal to anthony and i am writing surname um, this let it be first name uh, first name is anthony and if i am writing uh, last name equal to juice okay first name is anthony and last name is juice so i can just concatenate this so i'll be writing print okay either i can uh, just display it or i can just store it in another place so i'll be writing name name equal to first name plus Name equal to first name plus last name, and if I'm writing print, name, I'll get the output as Anthony Jones. Here, okay. I'll get the output as Anthony Jones. So first name plus last name. So it is for concatenation. Okay, and if I need to have a space in between, what I will have to do is I have to just uh, simply add a space here. Okay. And if I just display it or if I print the name, I will get and in space this. Okay, this is how a concatenation works. Okay, so this is the concatenation function for concatenation. Okay, in a, uh, C program, you will be using a something called a uh, str. Oh, okay, string concatenation function. Right? Okay, instead of this, it is very simple that you can use plus. Okay. Next one is star. Star is for replicates a string. Okay, replication of a string. For example, if I'm writing, uh, I need a name. Okay, I need a string which has uh, 10 A's. Okay, which has 10 A's. 10 A in it. Okay, so I'll be writing, uh, I'll be here. Yeah. I am writing new string. The new string is a string. And for this, inside this, there should be 10 days. So I will be writing like this A. I have to make this A repeat 10 times. So either I can write 10 A's here, or I, the simple way of writing is A star 10. Okay, so new string equal to A star A in quotes. We will write A and I will write star 10. Clear. And if I write print, print string, if I write print new string, then I will get 10 A's displayed. Clear. So that is for star. Likewise, there are a lot of functions upper to convert into upper character. Okay, so if I am writing uh, name dot. It, it gets converted into uppercase. Okay, likewise, uh, there is title case, etc., etc., etc. Okay, now there is uh, something called find. Find is a function that will be very, very useful for you. Okay, find is a function. Okay, so name. Okay, so I'll be uh, writing something. If I need to find something, okay, if I need to check whether so. I will write name dot find. I want to check whether Tony is present in Anthony. Okay, Tony is present in Anthony. So I will be writing name dot find Tony. So Tony is present in Anthony in the index two. Index two means zero, one, two. So here you can see Tony. There, here you can see Tony. So name dot find Tony. Clear. So it will give you the output as two. So there is a direct function so that you can just find out a substring to check whether a substring is find out uh, is present on. For that I will be using find. Clear. Likewise, uh, 
I can have another thing called replace. Replace. Okay. For example, if I'm writing uh, name, uh, I'm using the string, new string. Of replace. Okay. And I'm replacing all the A's with B. So I'm writing new string dot replace A with B. So what happens? Instead of 10 A's, I will get 10 B. Clear. Instead of 10 A's, I'll be getting 10 B. Okay. So replace is a function that can be used to replace something. Okay, this is clear. Okay, so likewise, a lot of functions are there in uh, uh, C program, uh, sorry, uh, Python, uh, that you can use. Okay, so you can just move to all the uh, pro, uh, main functions in the stream. Okay, so some, these are some of the main functions. Okay, plus is the to concatenate, upper, lower, find, replace, etc. are some of the important functions that we'll be using in stream. Okay. The main uh, power of Python is that it has uh, a lot of inbuilt functions for stream. Okay, you just need to give out the function and it will give out the answer. Yeah, you need not code all the, uh, taking all the character from the string one by one. You need not take it. Uh, you have direct functions to use. Okay, so that's all about string and its functions. Okay. I think, I hope that you all know what a string is in C. Like a implementation is also same in Python. That's why I'm not explaining a much on string example. Okay, so I'll be just explaining. I just explained some of the string functions. Yeah, so that's about string functions. Now, we'll move to the number system. Okay, so this is a, uh, for some of the people, uh, you already know what a number system is. Some of you will be studying it in digital, um, some uh, digital systems you will be running. Okay. And uh, for uh, uh, S3 students, uh, S3 computer, uh, sorry, uh, for electronics and electrical students, you will be learning some logic design in that you will be finding out the number system, what a number system is. And, okay. I don't think that the mechanical and the civil students will be learning number system, but uh, just to understand the number system, I'll be just explaining in very compact way so that you can understand it easily. Okay. So there are basically three number system. Okay, so there are basically three number system. Sorry, uh, four number system, sorry. There are basically four number system. The first one is decimal number system that we'll use, okay. For counting, we'll be using decimal, decimal number system. Okay, the second one is binary number system. Binary number system is a number system that is used by the computer. Okay, it do have only zero and one. Then there is octal number system, and another one is hexadecimal uh, number system. Okay, so actually number system, there are four types of number system. Okay, there are four number system. First one is decimal, second one is binary, third one is octal, and fourth one is hexa. Okay, so in decimal, so I'll just uh, write out what uh, what a decimal number system is. Okay, so in decimal, if I'm taking a decimal number system, okay, so here is a decimal number system. The numbers ranges from zero to nine. The number ranges from 0 to 9. Okay. After 9, it will move to two digit number. Okay. So the number we count will be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then it will move to the two digit number 10. Okay. You can see it here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So, uh, Different uh, numbers or the different symbols that are used in the symbol number system, we can say that there are 10 symbols. So, there is a symbol 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 9. Okay. All other numbers in the decimal number system is a combination of these different symbols, these digits, right? Right? All the other numbers in the decimal number system. That would be if I'm writing 80. 
this combination of 8 and 0. Okay. So, all the numbers in the number system, in the decimal number system, can be represented using the digits from 0 to 9. Okay. From 0 to 9, we know that there are 10 digits. From 0 to 9, there are 10 digits. So, we say that the base of decimal number system is 10. The base of decimal number system is 10. Okay. So, what do you mean by base? It's actually uh, the number of uh, different digits there is in the number system. Okay. That's right. The testimony is the number of 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 the 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 number of the of the number of the the Okay, so it is called the decimal number system and the base of the decimal number system is 10. That's why the name came. This C means 10. Clear. Now, next one is binary number system. So the second one is binary number system. Binary number system. In binary number system, like a decimal number system, there are nine, uh, 10 digits, right? 10 different digits. The base is 10. For binary number system, there are only two numbers, 0 and 1. For binary number system, only 0 and 1. After that, it will move to 2 digit. After all the combination, it will move to 3 digit. Okay, so only two symbols are there for binary number system. So we can say that it is of base 2. We can say that binary number system is of base 2. Because only two symbols are there. Okay, you can see here. In binary number system, first it is 0, then 1, then it will move to the two digit letters, that is 1, 0, then next one is 1, 1. After 1, 1, it will move to the three digits. So it is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. After 1, 1, 1, it will move to the four digit values, that is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. 1010, 1011, 1100, etc. etc. After 1111, it will move to the 5 digits, that is 10000. Okay, so all the numbers in the binary number system is actually made up of two symbols, that is 0 and 1. So we can call it as it is of these two. Okay. Likewise, this is another number system which is called the octal number system. Octal number system. For octal number system, the range of values that is used in octal is 0 to 7, including 7. So it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Octal. Okay, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so it's up to 7. 0 to 7 values are used, symbols are used for octal. So 0 to 7 means there are 8, 8 symbols, 8 different symbols. So base of octal number system is, base is 8. Clear, base of octal uh, number system is 8. After this 7, okay, so after from 0 to 7, it will move to the 2 digit number. Clear. So let's see here, first it was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. After 7, there is no 8, but it will move to the 2 digit number. That is 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7. After 1, 7, it will move to the next number, that is 2, 0. There is no 1, 8 and 1, 9. Okay. So, it will move to 2, 0. 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, etc. So, that will be how the counting goes. Okay. So, that is the octal number system. And the last one is the hexadecimal number system. Hexadecimal, hexadecimal number system. Last one is the hexadecimal number system. In the hexadecimal number system, it have a more number of different digits. Okay, actually it do have all the numbers from 0 to 9. And after that, it will be having from A to F. 
okay a to f clear yeah. so that is actually it do have 16 symbols 16 symbols that is why it is called base 16 the base of hexadecimal number is 16 0 to 9 there are 10 numbers 10 different digits then 11 is a 12 is b 13 is c 14 is d 15 is okay 12, uh, 12 uh, sorry for hexadecimal number uh, 10 is a 11 is b 12 okay you have to compare it with the decimal number you need not compare it with the octal number okay a corresponds to 10 then b that is 11 then c that is 12 then d that is 13 e for 14 f 15 so 0 to 15 it's uh, almost like 0 to 15 so there is 16 different symbols clear so that is a hexadecimal number system and the base of hexadecimal number system is 16 okay here you can see that 0 to f okay 0 to uh, sorry f corresponds to 15 and here in hexadecimal number 1 0 is same as 16 in decimal okay so we will represent like uh, 1 0 I am writing the base as a subscript. Okay, so one zero to the base is t. That is a hexadecimal number is equal to is the same as sixteen to the base ten. This is the decimal number. Okay, and which is equal to here you can say near sixteen it is one zero 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 zero. 1 0 0 0 0 of binary number system and which is same as which is same as 20 okay which is the same as 20 in octal number system all these are same 10 in the hexadecimal number system is the same as 16 in the by a decimal number system which is same as 10,000 that is 1 0 0 0 0 in the binary number system and which is same as 20 in the hexa sorry in the octal number system it is the octal number system clear I hope it is clear okay you can just get it uh, from here okay for example I can say 35 35 in octal number system will be equal to 35 from octal number system will be equal to 29 in decimal number system 35 in octal number system is same as 29 in decimal number system okay so using this table we know how to convert it from okay using this table you know how to convert it from a uh, decimal number system um, or number system okay from one number system to another number system all of you know okay you will know how to uh, change it from one number system to another number system clear yeah. so without this table how to convert from one number system to another number system that's we want to tell how to convert from one number system to another number system without using this thing and we're gonna learn. okay so if i'm writing the question for this will be like uh, 40 in hexadecimal system is equal to dash in binary number system sorry binary no decimal number system 40 in hexadecimal number system will be equal to dash in decimal number system Okay, in this, from this table, you know that from 40 in hexadecimal, so hexadecimal 40, it is equal to 64 in, it will be equal to 64 in decimal, and, uh, sorry, decimal number system, decimal. There. Likewise, you know, uh, you will learn how to convert it from one to another, to other, without using, without using the table. Clear? Okay. So we will move to the conversion from one number system to another number system. First, uh, 
two decimal number system two decimal number system okay if you need to uh, convert any number system from any number system to decimal number system what you have to do is you have to sum up the base values not base values this is the place values sorry this is the place values you have to sum up with the place values okay so i uh, we already know okay if i am writing a decimal number so i am i am writing a decimal number okay if i am writing two digits we can write it as 6 into 10 raised to 0 plus 2 into 10 raised to 1 okay and this is the place value you know that 10 raised to 0 and 10 raised to 1 are the place value okay so to get 20 sits i will be writing 2 into 10 raised to 1 plus 6 into 10 raised to 0 right so this is an division we can also write 2 20 sits as 2 into 10 raised to 1 plus 6 into 10 raised to 0 likewise likewise to convert from any number system to decimal number system from any number system to decimal number system we will be multiplying it with the place value okay for example i am writing 40 okay 14 okay and the, it is of the octal number system 14 to the base 8 so it is an octal number system okay you know that since it is of the base 8 to convert it into decimal i'll be multiplying it with place value okay that is 4 into base of octal number system is 8 so i will be writing 4 into 8 raised to 0 plus 1 into 8 raised to 1 okay so i'll be writing this i will be converting this 14 okay i'll be converting this 14 in the octal number system to the decimal number system by multiplying it with the base value or base value of 4 is 4 into 8 so 8 raised to 0 and base value of 1 is 1 into 8 raised to 1 so which is equal to 8 plus 4 which is equal to 12 i hope it is clear i hope it is clear okay so if i put more like this i can just check okay 14 to the base 8 14 to the base 8 so i am okay, on noctal i am writing 14 the corresponding is 12 so we got 12 as the decimal value clear okay once more i'll use another number system for example i am using uh, a decimal uh, sorry binary number system so i'll be writing 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 0 1 1 that is a binary number system okay to the base 2 i need to convert it into decimal number system so what i will be doing i'll be multiplying it with the place value so what i will be doing 2 raised to 0 this is 2 raised to 0 2 is the base value this is 2 raised to 1 this is 2 raised to 2 this is 2 raised to 3 and this is 2 raised to 4 okay so this will be equal to 2 raised to 4 plus so 2 raised to 4 into 1 that is 2 raised to 4 plus 2 raised to 3 into 1 that is 2 raised to 3 plus 2 raised to 2 into 1 uh, 2 raised to 2 into 0 that is 0 plus 2 raised to 1 into 1 that is 2 plus 2 raised to 0 into 1 that is 1 okay so 2 raised to 4 is 16 16 plus 8 plus 2 Plus one, which is equal to twenty-seven. Eight plus two, ten. Twenty-six plus one, which is equal to twenty-seven. Okay, so I am right, saying that one one zero one one. The corresponding decimal value is sixteen plus eight plus two plus one. That is twenty-seven. Let's check. Okay, one one zero one one is the binary value, and its decimal value is twenty-seven. Hope it is clear. Okay, 
Hi guys, uh, we'll do for the what we say. Uh, I'll say one zero hetsa. Or uh, I'll take another number. Okay, so I'll write uh, two one of hetsa. Okay, so I'll take another number that is two one of hetsa. So what I need to do is I need to convert it into uh, that's a decimal value. Okay, so uh, sorry, I need to convert into binary value. So we need to know how to convert it into binary value. You just try how to convert this into binary value. Sorry, decimal value. How to convert this into decimal value. Okay, so for that, what I'll be doing is uh, I'll be just multiplying it with the base value. Right? I'll be multiplying it with the base value. So how to multiply it with a base value? How to multiply it with a base value? You just do. For that I will be writing the base value is 16. For 21, the base value is 16, right? So this is 16 raised to 0 and this is 16 raised to 1. Okay. So by multiplying it, I will get 16 into 2 plus 1, which is equal to 16 into 2 is 32 plus 1, that is 33. Okay. So 33. So in hexa decimal number, in hexa decimal number, if I am taking 21, which corresponds to 33. Okay, that's how you will be converting from uh, any number system, from any number system to decimal number system. Okay, so you will have a doubt. You will have a doubt like a, how to convert. A number which is having a uh, variable. Okay, so if I am writing one a, I am writing one a. I need to convert it into a uh, decimal number system. One a is a hexadecimal number system. I need to convert it into decimal number system. How to convert it into decimal number system? I have to multiply it with. The, I have to multiply it with the base value. Okay, so I will be writing one a is the I'll be writing 16 is to 0, 16 is to 1. This is how I'll be writing. Okay. 1 into 16. 16 is to 1 is 16. Plus A into 16 is to 0. For A, I'll just convert into decimal. For A, the decimal value is 10. So I'll be writing 10 into 16 is to 0. That is 1. Okay, for A, we, instead of A, I'll be writing 10, 10 into 1. Okay, A corresponds to 10, when, and that is the number, so I'll be writing 10, 10 into 1. Okay, so it will be 16 plus 10, which is equal to 26. Clear? So we'll see that 1A. Uh, 1A one one corresponds to 26. I hope it is clear. So this is how you will be converting from any number system to decimal number system. For that, you will be summing up the base values. Yes, clear, clear. Okay. Now we will see how to convert from decimal to binary. You know, you know how to convert from any number system, binary to decimal, you know, octal to decimal, you know, hexa to decimal, you know. Now we learn from decimal to binary. For that, you will be using another scenario to convert from decimal to binary. Okay. So, uh, for converting it with a, from decimal to binary, you will be dividing it with the, the base value. You will be dividing it with the base value. Converting from decimal to binary. Okay. To convert it from decimal to binary, you will be dividing it with the base value. Okay. So, let's see how it works. So I need to convert decimal to binary. Okay, so I'll write uh, 24. I need to convert 24 to binary. The base value of binary is 2. The base value of binary is 2. Okay, 24 is decimal number. So base value of binary is 2. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll divide it by 2. So I'll be dividing it with 2. Okay, I'll get uh, what is the value? 12. I'll get 12. 
the remainder is zero, right? The remainder is zero. Again, I will be dividing it into output. Um, the result is six. The remainder is again zero. Again, I will be dividing it into. Okay, uh, you will get three. The remainder is zero. Again, I will be dividing it two. Okay, I will get one. And the remainder is also one. Okay, and I uh, will be taking all the remainders in the opposite direction, in this direction. That is one one zero zero zero. One one zero zero zero. Okay. So let's get that. Twenty four is one one zero zero zero. Here, yeah. this is how you will be getting what I'm getting from decimal to binary. Here, yeah. again I'll be writing. Again, okay. again I'll be writing. I'll be converting something like a twenty three. Sorry, let it be fifty. Okay, fourteen is a decimal number. I will be converting it to binary. Okay, so I will be dividing it to two. Remainder is one. Uh, quotient is seven. I will be again dividing it to two. Remainder is one. Quotient is three. Again, I will be dividing it to two. Remainder is one. Quotient is also one. Here, yeah. and I will be taking it to the reverse order. That is one, 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 one. Okay, one 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 of two equal to fifty of ten, base ten. So I'll be writing fifteen. Fifteen one 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 one. Okay. So this is how you'll be converting from decimal to binary, from decimal to binary. Here. Okay. Now, to convert from octal and hexa to to and from binary. Okay. This is very easy. Just that uh, you need to learn some values. You need to learn some values. Okay. So first, I will be converting octal from octal to binary. Okay. I will be converting octal to binary. Then I will be converting hexa to binary. Uh, okay. Next question. Okay. For some, uh, we'll start with binary to octal first. Okay. We'll start with binary to octal first. Okay. So. Uh, I need to convert one one zero one zero. I need to convert this into octal. Okay, so this is a binary, and I need to get which is a number to the base eight. So I'm going to convert it into octal. For that, I'll be grouping it into three. Okay, so one one zero one zero is a number. I need to convert it from binary to octal. For converting it to octal, I will be grouping into three from right. Okay, so this three here, yeah. and uh, that will be okay. Right side from right side, I am grouping into three. Uh, either you can just put a zero, no problem. Okay, so that uh, it will become of six feet. Okay, so this is of six feet, and I am grouping. It from three from right. Okay, zero one zero one one zero. Okay, now I'll be writing the corresponding octal value. Okay, what is the corresponding octal value of zero one zero zero one zero binary? That you have to check for binary. What is the corresponding value of zero one zero? For this octal value is three. It is two. And zero one one, the corresponding octal value is three. So I'll be writing three two, three two. Okay, let's see zero one one zero one zero. Here I can see three two in octal. Zero one one zero one zero. That is the conversion from. Octal to binary, sorry, binary to octal. Clear. Likewise, if I need to convert uh, from octal to binary, I'll be writing it in the form of three digits. Okay. For example, if I need to 
convert 27 27 of octal okay i need to convert 27 of octal to binary so for 7 i'll be writing the binary code uh, in three digits for 7 i'll be writing the binary code that is 111 that is the binary code for 7 for 2 the binary code is 0 1 so so this will be the binary code 10111 okay 10111 will be the binary code for 27 we we'll check for 27 10111 27 sorry for 27 is 10111 okay for 27 is 10111 okay so for octal to octal to binary i'll be writing the value of each digit in the three, uh, binary okay each digit in the three places clear and to convert from binary to octal we will be grouping it into three the binary number into three from right from right that is must okay you will be grouping it uh, grouping the binary number to three from right okay then you will be writing the corresponding uh, values of each group you will be writing the corresponding values of each group we will give you the octal number i hope it is clear okay we will do one more okay so for example i need to <clears throat> like uh, uh, 45 45 of octet I need to convert it into binary I need to convert it into binary so uh, what I will do I will write uh, the corresponding value of 5 ok I need to write the corresponding values of 5 and I need to write the corresponding value of 1 4 as 3 digits ok Corresponding value of 5 is 110. That you need to learn. You have to learn by 5. Corresponding value of 5, 110. Corresponding value of 4 is 101. So the output will be 101110. 45, 101110. Okay, so I will be taking 45, 101. Right. Mm. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, the value of 4, 45 is right. 4, it is 100, sorry, 5, it is 101. Okay, so it is 100, 101. So this is 45 for 45, it is 100, 101. Okay, for 4, it is 100, and for 5, it is 101. My mistake. Clear. I hope it is clear. I hope it is clear. So this is wrong. For 45, it is 100, 101. Clear. To convert from again from binary to octet. Again, I'll be doing one more example. So one one zero one zero one. Okay, that will be the number. So one zero one, it is five, and uh, one one zero, it is six. So it will be sixty-five. So I'm checking sixty-five in octal. Octal. Okay, tell sixty-five is. 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, the same numbers 110101 okay instead of grouping it into 3 we will be grouping into 4 for hexa okay so i'll be writing 200 0101 okay which is similar to 5 and 011 in hexa it is similar to 3 okay so we'll be grouping it into four. Zero one zero one and zero one one. Okay, so thirty-five. Zero zero one one. Okay, so thirty-five is equal to sixty-five, which is equal to one one zero one zero. Okay. I see that uh, in Hexa thirty-five 
will be equal to 65 in octa and which is equal to 110110. Clear. Likewise, uh, I am be doing the same thing. Okay, for example, if I need to convert to F. So this is of base 16. I need to convert it into binary. I'll be writing F in the form of 4 in the, in the binary with four places to also as binary in four places. For F it is 1, 1, 1, 1. And for 2 it is 0, 0, 1, 2. Okay, for 2 F it will be 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. For 2 F. For 2 F. Okay, 2 F it is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay. So this is how we will be converting from uh, octal to the binary, binary to octal, and hexa to binary and binary to hexa. Hope it is clear. So this is all about conversion. I hope the class is clear. If you have any doubts, you can just ask. Okay. Thank you.